Hey guys, this is Megan with Thousand Generation Farms. Today I'm actually gonna do a small DIY inside that I've been waiting to do for a little while now. Um, and just, it'll make our lives in the kitchen a little bit easier. So won't you come farming with us? As you may know, um, on Thousand Generation Farms YouTube channel and just in general on our farm, we do a lot of DIYs because I love to do them. Joseph gets roped into doing it too because he's just a really good handy man, um, good with tools. I'm not the best at it, so um, but like anybody out there, any DIY, we're learning as we go. So I just want to show you something that um, we've kind of been working on for a while, and it's in the kitchen. The kitchen is a mess because we had a couple Christmases this weekend, but um, so just don't don't mind the mess, but I will show you. So I have the microwave on because I'm making some lunch, but I want to show you guys. This wall over here was actually like, it was just a mess. There was some shelving there. It didn't really match. And I actually... Um, was looking for some shelves like these white ones that just look sleek and um, kind of modern. Um, they still kind of have a farmhouse vibe to them. Um, and I found them. They're actually a product of Sauder. That's S-A-U-D-E-R. And I'll show you um, how great they are. So I got two different sizes and they have a whole bunch of different sizes. But as you can see here, like I have the microwave. This is a water filter because our well water out here we it has high nitrates in it so we have to filter our water before we drink it and i wanted something that was going to hide the microwave and hide the filter which this works great for that and i'll show you this over here let's see if i can so this side actually has um i mean you can choose to put this door on either side the left or right but i put it on the left because it worked that way but it has as you can see, this shelving in the door, which is super nice. And um, we have other shelving in here and I needed a place for my KitchenAid because that was sitting on the washer. And if you guys have a farmhouse or just an old house in general, you know that there's not much storage. Um, behind second door number two here, there's just more, um, more areas for shelving. This bottom one is pretty unorganized at the moment, but um, I even got this shelf off Amazon. It holds the koozies. And so just really nice. These are all adjustable as you can see the holes over there. Um, so just really cool. Makes the kitchen look way more organized. Sorry, I just about tripped. Um, I'm still kind of decorating up here, deciding what to do with those bins. But for the time being, um, this is how it is and I love the look of it. It goes with like um, this table I DIY'd and then also, sorry, really messy I told you guys, but um, the kitchen that we we put new backsplash sink and um, countertop on. So the white just really makes it lighter in here. It looks good. So um, what, I was, what I'm doing today is these shelves. I think we got, oh, we must've got four because I have an extra one here, but um, we have four here that came with this. And so for this filter, basically what I've been doing now is we have this hose that goes from the spout to the water jug. And what we've been doing is just pulling the filter out to here so it hangs off the shelf and then having one door open while we fill the waters. And that's fine. It really doesn't take too long to fill a water jug, maybe a day. So the door is only open for that long. But initially, I had the idea to drill a hole so that we could just keep the filter in there, keep the jug underneath, and then you can shut the door, you can drain water, whatever. Um, it just works good. So um, basically, that was my DIY for the day. And I already kind of did a little bit of it, but I just want to show you how I did it. So I had this shelf. I kind of lined up where I wanted the filter and then 
where I and you can see like this is kind of like a particle board material so the white coating or paint whatever you want to call it it's kind of chipped off but not a big deal because not anyone will really see that so um but so I just marked with a pencil where I wanted it I made sure the jug lined up and I also wanted to make sure that it was a little bit bigger than the diameter of this tubing so I took this with me to find a, the correct drill bit and as you can see with this hole it definitely is a little bigger which is great so normally i wouldn't do this inside especially since i have a baby but i took this one and one eighth drill bit um these are really handy if you need to make a hole in something and they're a little different than the normal bit right because they have a bigger diameter um and then i use my dual um drill here i just insert sort of this at the end of course like normal and then we drilled that hole into that piece of particle board. Something to remember if you're going to do something like this inside, you want to make sure that you're not just doing it on the floor because when that drill bit comes through that and the other the back side of the particle board, you will drill into the floor. And so I started, I just laid it on the floor. Um, and we have wood floors, I really didn't want to like scratch them up, of course. So, um, I just got halfway done with it and then I kind of vacuumed up some of the wood chippings because I didn't want them to get all over. And then I got um, just, this is crazy, like redneck, I guess you could say, but um, I got just two kind of really thick pieces of Tupperware that were the same height and I put them under the board. So I'll show you, like I laid them on the ground. So I'll show you here, I laid them on the ground and then so I had one like under here and then under here, but not under the hole that I, not under where I wanted the hole to go. And then, so there was, you know, probably a foot of space underneath this board before the floor. And then I finished out my hole and I did not get the floor. So Joseph <laughs> will be so happy. Um, obviously that's not the best way to do things, but we get impatient, right? And that's just how I did it. And it worked fine. Um, the next issue I had was I started, you know, to put all this back together and I'm like, oh, I want to see if it works. But with this hole, there was still some sawdust and like wood chippings, wood chip particles in there. So I was talking to Joseph and I didn't know if I should like clear coat the inside or paint it. Well, so I ended up just vacuuming as much as I could in there. Um, if I was out in the shop, I would probably just, um, get the air compressor and really blow it out. So those wood chippings came out, but, um. I'm going to use this, it's kind of like an off-white. I don't know that it says here anymore. Oh, meeting house white. This is a white I use for like everything. Like these chairs have it on it. It's just kind of like an off-white. Um, I think I'm going to just paint the inside of that with this white because it. Will, if there is any loose particles, it will hold the particles in and then like this tubing, it's rubber obviously, so it kind of sticks. As you can see, like there's one right there. I'm gonna have to like wash this before I use it, but I didn't want wood chippings getting into my water. So I'm going to paint that. Um, you could use a clear coat too, but I just had paint on hand right now. So um, I need to do that. And I will show you when I'm doing that, even though it's gonna be a really easy job. And then we will go from there. So right now I'm going to open my paint and I actually like already, I already was doing this a while, but, um, it's been sitting quite a while. And after I did that for a while, I tried to open it and it just really needs stirred. So, and like I said, I'm doing this all redneck today. So usually you use a paint can opener, but this or a butter knife works just as good. So look at that. That does not look like white. That looks like yellow. It's nasty. So what I'm going to do here is stir it up. LOL. Again, I can't believe I just said LOL. Um, and this is a paper plate I'm going to use for a stir stick because I just don't have time to go find one. And it'll be fine. I'll just throw it away. So I'm going to start stirring this up. And it might take a while because it's supposed to be white. But look, there's the white. It's coming. It's 
really important to make sure your paint is stirred before you use it because sometimes it looks the right color, even if it's just sat for like a day or two. But if you apply it on your wall, oh my, and you haven't like really just gave it a good stir, it can really be a different shade even. Even when the sun hits it, it can look totally different. Like if you paint one wall one day and then two days later you come back and paint the next wall. So it's very important to stir your paint. Look at all that. I'm probably wasting paint by using this plate, but. Something I've learned about being a mom is that you can't always, well, I mean, you do your best to do it the right way. <laughs> You do it the right way sorry maybe i'm saying this wrong but sometimes you just use what you have and maybe it'll work out just as good and then in the end you can't like beat yourself up about it if you did it a little differently and got the same result because you just don't have a ton of time to do it or to go look for stuff and Anyways, this is getting to be about the color I want it. I think we're going to call it on that. So, okay, sorry, there's a Q-tip on the back. <laughs> this is just dirty plate. So I put the painted plate on there. That was my stir stick. And I'm just actually going to use this and just dab some paint off there. And then um, just paint it like that instead of using a brush because this will work fine. It, isn't, it does not need to be perfect. It just needs to be covered. So I'm just going to do my best at doing that. Okay, so you can see, maybe not, it's blurry. Like you can see it's a little, there, a little bit of paint got in there. It's pretty porous, so I'm gonna do it a few more times. Okay, so for the most part, this hole is painted and I know the wood's kind of coming up right here, but it's okay. And I even went from the bottom and kind of did that to the bottom as well. I think this will be, it'll be fine. Um, I could put clear coat on it, but I just probably won't. Um, I'm gonna fix it later if if it's been a problem, but I think it'll work great. So I'm gonna let it dry for a little while. In the meantime, I'm actually making some lunch. Um, if you aren't from Nebraska or have never been to Nebraska, you may not know what this is. We have Runza here, and basically, they are known for their Runzas. Um, it's like a hamburger and cabbage, sometimes yeah. onion, kind of just depends. Um, mixture, and then basically a piece of bread around it so it almost looks like a burrito but it's super good so I'm making the inside and I'm just gonna have the hamburger and cabbage with a little salt and pepper and maybe some onion um I'm eating that it's a little a little healthier in my version or in my mind than having the bread on it plus bread takes forever to make but um just a little homemade runs a mix I'm making and I will show you that too all right guys so I the hole is dry and I put this rubber tubing in here Lined it up with our deal, our, um, not tank, our jug, and then, you can hear it, it's working. The one thing we we'll have to watch is just like when it gets full, um, we'll have to make sure when we put the last amount of water in here that we, you know, it's the jug's about getting full, that we open the door and maybe watch it just so it doesn't overflow. Cause I've had that happen with this filter. It, I put too much water in it, it overflows in here. And this 
wood can get really bad or particle board whatever it is it can be really bad damage if it's wet for a long time so but anyways there is my DIY and it worked great um one thing Joseph had said to me was that like how are you gonna get the rubber tubing out like when you take this out it's gonna fall down uh so um when he gets home he's gonna help me troubleshoot he thought maybe if we did a slit here so that you could take take the rubber tubing out and that's a great idea as well but um anyway so there's my DIY for the day. So here's the finished product. Um, I had my pants in here before, so I just put them back there. They fit great. And um, unless Joseph changes something, this is how we'll keep it. And that way we can keep the door shut. Well, thanks guys for coming farming with us today. And don't forget to um, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Share our videos and like and comment on our videos if you like what you see. Also, just share with your friends and help us to get that subscriber count up. Thanks for joining us today on Thousand Generation Farms and we'll see you next time.